Hey folks, how's it going? So if this is the first time we're meeting, hello, my name is Jay. If you have been watching me for a while, hello, once again, welcome back. Um, so on this channel, what we do here is we review a lot of speakers, audio, um, anything to do with audio, really, amplifiers, preamplifiers, integrated amplifiers, and you know, educational videos on how to improve your sound. So if you're interested in audio and music and improving sound and components, then please do consider subscribing. It's certainly something that you may be interested in. Also, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. As well, it does help us out when you join our community by subscribing. So today we're taking a look at the Creative Sound Solutions P215 bookshelf speakers over here. And as you can see, they're quite small, but they're quite deep. So I put it on its side so you can see how deep it is and also the nice finish on its side over here. Now, a little bit about the company. So the company is interesting because they make speaker drivers. Before they are a speaker company, they are a speaker driver company. So they make speaker drivers, not only for themselves, but for other companies as well. And their methodology and technology is, is very, very simple. Uh, they're using basically technologies and methodologies that has been proven to work over the years by uh, very respected and trusted engineers like Floyd Tool. And their approach is to basically provide you the best crossover driver design at the lowest cost possible uh, and skipping through the dealers, the distribution, all that good stuff um, just to go straight to the consumer. So for them, it's all about providing the best crossover driver cabinet, all transparent to whoever is buying the end user um, without you know jacking up the price because of retail or distribution. So there's really no surprise in terms of what you're getting out of these speakers. They have um, all the specs listed. I believe they even have a measurement if you ask for it. And you have a tweeter that they list. The driver is also listed. Um, the, in fact, the caps, the, the caps used in, in the crossover, the crossover circuitry and all that is also listed. In fact, they actually sell a kit version of the speaker. Now, I'm going to talk about that because that's quite important. Now, this is the finished version of the speaker and it's basically a uh, finished cabinet and has the upgraded crossover with better dampening material. Now, they sell the kit version for 979 USD with the superior crossover, exactly the same, and the MDF cabinet, which is not finished. So the difference in dollar you're paying here is actually the cabinet, the actual finished beautiful cabinet you see here. And also they use a slightly better dampening material inside the cabinet. So that is the basic difference you're gonna get between the kit version, which is $979 versus the $2,600 right here. Now, if you decide to get the drivers and crossovers, just, just the drivers and crossovers, the price will be $469. Now, if you want the cabinet, the unfinished MDF cabinet with the standard crossover instead of the uh, superior crossover, and the price will be $579 instead. Now, it's also important to note that on finished products, they offer a 30-day uh, return policy and they pay shipping back to them if you don't like it. So there's no cost for you to try them out practically. So that's pretty interesting to note. So you get kind of like a 30-day in-home demo, if you so will. Now, this comes in two different finishes. The one you see here is white with walnut, and they have one that is black with rosewood. I think I may actually like the black with the rosewood better, but this is certainly a beautiful, beautiful finish. Um, not only is it beautiful, but you can actually tell that the cabinet is pretty, pretty darn damped, and it's very sturdy, and you can really tell it's high quality. Um, it's definitely higher quality than let's say the Bacard S400 cabinet, or you know, or even the Kevlar 3 cabinet. In comparison, this seems to be much higher in quality. Now the speakers are 87 dB at eight ohms, 
and they are quite no, quite not hard to drive. They're okay to drive. So we'll get into actual pairing of amplifiers I used with it um, later on in this review. But the extension is from 60 hertz to all the way to 20 kilohertz. So that's the frequency response of the speaker. And the tweeter used here is their own tweeter. It's called the LD22 tweeter. It's a soft dome tweeter, uh, the fabric dome tweeter. And here is actually using a SB Acoustics uh, five inch Satori driver for the woofer. And quite frankly, they chose this woofer because they found it to work better with their tweeter. Um, they work very, very well together. And I can definitely tell that because the, the, uh, the integration here is seamless. So that is very good to note. So without further ado, let's get down to the sound quality. So starting with the bass, as always, um, this is, like I said, starts at 60 hertz. So it's not gonna produce any deep, deep bass. Now, I test it with the Limit to Your Love by James Blake, a standard test track that I use for that deep bass. And if you see my reviews, I use this track over and over again. They have two distinctive bass notes, very, very deep bass notes. And it didn't seem distinct at all with this speaker. I could not really tell. It seemed more like a one single note and at times it will be louder and then quieter, louder and then quieter instead of actually hearing two distinctive notes. So it can't do deep bass. Now this was already already apparent on another track that I tested, uh, Night Train by uh, Christian McBride. Um, he's going in there playing his bass just going crazy with it. And on parts where I'm supposed to hear very, very deep bass notes, I was not able to hear it. In fact, his bass sounded a little bit too thin, which is a good distinction that the speaker can't do deep, deep bass. Now, I tried it with by adding a SB1000 subwoofer that I have, and I found it to be much, much better when it came to deep bass response. Now, when it comes to its mid bass deviating away from that deep, deep sub bass, you're gonna find the bass to be extremely tight, extremely clean, extremely, extremely tight, um, almost second to none. So even compared to other bookshelf speakers I reviewed on this channel, like Kef R3, Bacard S400, the bass is going to be a, a lot, a lot more focused and tight, and it's going to be extremely, extremely clean and fast. Um, in fact, it's borderline hurting your chest when you play tracks like, uh, for example, um, Sophie Tucker's Deja Vu Affair. So on this track, you can hear that um, very tight bass on, on just, just punching and uh, borderline hurts my chest at louder vol volumes. So if you like that type of tight, uh, fun sounding mid bass, if you so will, then this speaker does that very, very well, almost second to none in terms of its tightness. Um, when it comes to some tracks that I listen to like Dead Mouse, um, just absolutely incredible amount of mid bass can be heard. Very punchy, very dynamic, very, very fast and quick. So, um, and also very clean, like I mentioned. So that's basically the bass with the speaker. Now, bass is not exactly the strongest point with the speaker. So moving on to its mid-range, uh, it's really, really when it gets ex very, very impressive. Now, when it comes to the mid-range, you're gonna get very much a speaker that reminds me of the uh, LS35A, which is a legendary speaker. So if you can do your own research on the LS35A, you will know that the mid-range is a bit warm sounding and you're gonna find that on the speaker, it's gonna be warm sounding, it's gonna be a bit magical um, despite the fact that they don't advertise magic. You're gonna find that it's a lot magical. There's a lot, ma a lot of magic in, that's happening in the mid-range. In fact, you're gonna find that it's very, very smooth yet yeah, lots of little detail, nuances and layering that's gonna be partaking in that mid-range section. So that mid-range, when it comes to email, uh, female vocals or male vocals, it's gonna come across very clean and at the same time, very engaging, very smooth, uh, non-fatiguing, yet um, a, li a little bit warmer in presentation. So you're gonna get that kind of little bit, little bit holographic uh, sound to it. So it's, it's almost as if it's the, right there in the room and the imaging on the speaker is fantastic and we'll get into that in a, 
in the later part of this video, but just because the imaging is very fantastic and just because of that layering and texture in the mid-range with a lot of detail and nuances, uh, it gives a trill down my spine. Literally, I was getting a shrill down my spine. And as you know, I don't get that often with speakers nowadays, um, especially because I listen to so many. It's very, 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 very rare for me to get a shrill down my spine listening to the same tracks I listen to over and over again um, with many, many different speakers. So some of the tracks that I listened to, it was Cry Me A River by Ella, uh, Hurt by Johnny Cash, now these are very emotional songs and even in, this, in these songs that I listen to on a daily basis to try and test speakers, I was very much engaged emotionally and I uh, played multiple tracks by even Carpenter um, and all these artists, um, Young Sona, this was uh, my favorite things. And all these, all these tracks had really dark backgrounds when the vocals were kicking in and there was nothing else around them. The background was very, very dark, um, pitch dark. So it seems that the distortion level on the speaker is quite low. That's what I can assume from it. And also just, it was very engaging. Um, the presentation of the vocals were so realistic. One of the most realistic mid presentations and tonalities I've heard in a speaker in a very long time um, from the LS35 A's, I heard that. And so that's what it reminds me of. In fact, I would go far as to say that I actually prefer this mid-range uh, and even in comparison to the famous and legendary LS35 A's and even some of the Harvest speakers that I've heard over the years. So that's pretty much the mid-range uh, magic that's going on with the speaker. and. At the same time, it's funny because it's very articulate and detailed uh, even though it's a little bit warm in presentation. And the vocals and instruments are going to sound pretty sweet and realistic again. Now, I, say, I keep saying realistic, but basically what this means is that when I hear an instrument, I can tell what the instrument is. Uh, the you know, singer's voice that I know uh, sounds the way it should. So for example, uh, one of the tracks by Chuck Mangione feels so good. Uh, they they play an instrument called American fl fl Flugglehorn. And I love this instrument. I heard it um, in my bands before. It sounded really, really good. It has this sweet sound to it, and it portrays that sweetness very, very well, um, especially on this track in particular. It is very engaging without any fatigue whatsoever. And in fact, I would go as far as to say that it sounds very, very realistic, and I can definitely tell from a trumpet to a flugglehorn a flugglehorn, I can't even pronounce it right, um, very distinctively, especially with these speakers, I can tell it right off the bat that it's not a trumpet, it's a flugglehorn, American flugglehorn. Now, so that is basically uh, what I mean. And when I play tracks like, for example, Drums Intro uh, by Niles, um, this track has a lot going on. It has electric guitar, drums that's played by hand, stick, snares, cymbals, uh, a lot of stuff is going on in this track. And you can hear all the different instruments and you can tell right away that they are sounding as it should. If you ever play any type of these instruments before, then you can tell right off the bat that these speakers are producing it wonderfully and fantastically with lots of detail and nuances and texture. And that's the other thing. The voices, one of the reasons I got a show down my spine was because I could almost hear um, and see and picture, if you so will, the the throat of the singer. If you like, I could I could sense the texture in the voice. It was that type of um, realism and texture that was in the voice produced by these speakers. So the mid range is very very magical, uh, realistic at the same time, articulate. Now talking about articulate, one of the tracks that I played and I found really really interesting was "Oh to Buy" by Yazoo. This is a live recording. It's a wonderful, wonderful track. I love it playing all the time, but sometimes on some speakers, even high-end speakers, um, you'll find that uh, the vocals, you have no idea what the heck is saying because it's a live recording. You don't really understand what the lyrics are saying. On these speakers, there was not a problem. Um, I could hear and understand every word he was saying and all the lyrics, I could definitely tell without a problem 
when I was playing with these speakers. So it's very articulate. Um, there's a lot of detail, like I said, a lot of nuances. Nothing is, you know, um, overshadowing or overpowering one another. And it's very balanced in the mid range. At the same time, it's again uh, slightly warm and engaging and lovely without being fatigued or too forward in presentation. So, all in all, very, very good mid range. So with the treble, it's going to be generally an easygoing treble. You're not going to find it too sharp or too bright in any way or form. Um, there's going to be a lot of detail, uh, snares and, and uh, hi-hats or all these high-frequency notes or singer's voice that come through that high frequency. It's going to sound natural. It's not going to sound bright or in your face. It's going to be a little bit more relaxed than uh, most speakers. But if you're used to some really, really warm speakers, then you're going to find these a lot, lot more extending into the high frequency. In fact, when I play tracks like So Wet by My Miles Davis, uh, on this track, there's like a hi-hat that someone hits on the right side and that, type, uh, that kind of radiates or resonates towards the left. And that uh, type of resonation doesn't exist in a lot of speakers. Uh, that information is rather lost and that detail is rather lost. Um, the texture is rather lost in a lot of speakers. But on this speaker, that is very apparent. Um, I really, really enjoyed that kind of little detail and nuances and the high frequency that this speaker was able to provide. And just like I said, in the mid range, um, you know, everything is gonna sound natural, uh, especially in the high frequency as well. So a hi-hat is gonna sound like a hi-hat, snare is gonna sound like a snare, saxophone is gonna sound like a saxophone, violin is gonna sound like a violin, everything is gonna sound natural and the way it should without being too in your face and fatiguing uh, to listen to in any way or form. Now, if you're someone who is very used to the warmer sound and is coming from a very warmer sounding com uh, 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 speaker in comparison, then you're gonna find these to be tad bright uh, on certain tracks. So that is basically going to be your uh, your your way of understanding how the treble works on the speaker. For the most people out there, I can almost guarantee that the treble is going to be very, very pleasing. And certainly to me, I find this to be a very balanced speaker in terms of treble and how forward it is into its presentation. And that brings me to the low and high listening volume um, in comparison. So in terms of low volume, it's going to be almost second to none. Um, it's going to be one of the best bookshelf speakers for low listening. A lot of nuances and detail is going to be provided in the mid range and the high frequency at lower volumes. Of course, the bass is not going to be there um, as much when you have the volume cranked down. In fact, the bass is going to be very weak when you have it at low volumes. Now, of course, you can add a subwoofer and I've done so myself. And, and at low volumes, it still helps to add a subwoofer as well. Um, but just to add the notion that you can't replace a floor stander with these, hoping to get that floor stander bass impact uh, with these speakers with a subwoofer. You're just not gonna get the same type of presentation. So if you're a floor stander guy and you like that kind of floor stander big bass, then that is not this that's not what this is speaker is about. So another thing to note is that in small to medium sized rooms, when you have the volume cranked up pretty loud, you're gonna feel that the treble can become tad bright. So that is something common with most speakers and especially if you crank at loud volumes, then the speaker will definitely be a little bit tad bright for a lot of the people out there. It certainly was tad bright for me when I cranked it up, but that is not so much a caveat, but something that you should be aware of um, in a speaker like this that has just a lot of detail in the high frequency and mid range. So that brings me to the sound stage in imaging. Now in terms of imaging, the imaging is going to be fantastic. In fact, it's going to be almost second to none. It's like better than Kefar 3, um, Picard S400 and so on and so forth. It's going to image really, really well. Um, in fact, not really placement sensitive in any way, which we'll talk about in a minute, but really it's going to sound really, really good, really, um, regardless of that placement, the imaging is going to be just fantastic. It's going to be pinpoint in the middle and that adds to the shrill factor, uh, the, the shrill down my spine that I got, it's going to add to that factor because the singer is right focused, right in between. Um, and it doesn't sound like anything is coming from the speaker itself, uh, the speaker just definitely disappears. Now in terms of uh, the sound stage, the sound stage cast is going to be quite large, like just like any other bookshelf speaker. Uh, in fact, you know, in comparison to KFR3 and the Bacardi S400, at least in medium to small size rooms, you're gonna find that 
the sound stage cassette is going to be pretty darn similar across the board. Now what this speaker does better than the Kef R3 or the Bacardi S400 or a lot of the bookshelf speakers out there, in fact what it does best um, than most bookshelf speaker is in my opinion separation. So the separation between instruments is going to be very very good. Um, the detail, the black notes in between is going to be very very good. Uh, hence, the separation between instruments is going to be excellent. So if you're a person who listens to a lot of instruments, busy tracks, then the speaker can definitely be a benefit uh, because of that separation uh, performance. Now in terms of pairing and matching, this speaker is going to be very, very easy going and respond very well to different type of, types of components. So for example, if you want something that is a bit more warm sounding, then if you add a warmer sounding component, then it's gonna sound slightly more warmer and more for, uh, forgiving, less fatiguing, um, and so on and so forth. If you want to sound it a little bit more holographic, a little bit more bigger sound stage, then if you add a tube amplifier, it's gonna sound just the way uh, you imagine it. It's gonna have a lot more sound stage and holographicness and 3D dimensionality. Uh, if you want something a bit slightly on the brighter side of neutral, then if you add a component that sounds a little bit more articulate um, and has a brighter presentation, then you're gonna get that kind of presentation. So personally, my favorite was that uh, Billy amplifier that I reviewed recently. Excellent, ex excellent, and I really love this integrated amplifier just because it pairs so well with multiple speakers that I've tried with. Uh, in fact, I don't think there's a single speaker that I would say don't use this amplifier with. In fact, it just works very well with most, most ampli uh, speakers, and it's no exception here. Really, it adds air, it adds um, a little bit of that tube characteristic in the mid-range, making things a little bit more magical in a way. So I really love that pairing. So if you want something a bit more holographic, a little bit soundstage, a little bit more air in between, then this is certainly something to look into. Now, uh, I used the Hegel H120 as well, giving a little bit more neutral, a little bit slightly tad brighter presentation. And I also love that as well, uh, a, little, a little bit more cleaner separation and distinction between notes. Now, on the other hand, the Hegel H190 that I used was providing a much more fuller and uh, slightly more warmer presentation than the Hegel 120 which I also very loved. So that's another benefit of purchasing this speaker is that you're gonna get basically um, a very easy going pairing. So if you get something that is known to be a little bit more tad bright and you like that type of presentation, you get these speakers, you are like, okay, I want it a little bit more to be, then you can achieve that. If you want it a little bit more warmer, you can achieve that. That's not always possible with multiple um, you know, speakers out there. Some speakers are just not that easy going in terms of pairing and actually getting what the end result you want. So in terms of matching and synergy, um, the speaker is very easy going in that regard, which is very, very good to see. Now obviously you can play around with the placement, but the placement is not going to be that sensitive at all. In fact, uh, you want maybe some space from the side wall and you want to play around with how much uh, you have from the back wall. But the ultimate difference is going to be that, uh, you know, that fine tuning process where you kind of play around with the placement, but there's no general rule set in stone for this speaker. In fact, they're not very sensitive in terms of placement. Uh, they sounded pretty much good in all spots, just drop, drop down. In fact, at one point I found that one of the speakers were tilted towards the room more and one was tilted towards me more when I was adjusting it. And the imaging was very, 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 very good. So I was like, wow, that's impressive. Um, not a lot of speakers are gonna be able to do that, and this speaker is certainly because of its uh, very good tweeter that has very good dispersion. You're gonna get a very good off-access response as well, so you, when you're moving around the, about the room, you're gonna get a pretty good, decent sound, um, just as if you were sitting on a sweet spot. So that's one of the benefits of this speaker as well. And in fact, I would say that um, tilting them out towards the room, you're gonna get a slightly larger sound stage, a lot less fatiguing, high frequency, and if you want that little bit more detail, then you can tilt them towards you. But whether you have them tilted towards you or out into the room, the imaging is still going to be very fantastic. Um, so it's just a matter of treble, how much treble you want uh, firing right into your ears or do you want it kind of dispersed um, a little bit more evenly into the room. So that's basically the setup and the placement is very easy going, just a little bit playing around with and you have them perfectly easy to set up. Now that brings me to the caveats, and the caveat is going to be very, very simple and straightforward. Uh, the speaker is not going to be for everyone, especially for those that are looking for 
a uh, you know, floor stander level of performance or bass response. Uh, someone who's really you know likes a lot of bass, like you know Tujin, he likes a lot of bass. My friend, um, if you are someone like that, then you're just not gonna be satisfied with the amount of bass this per speaker provides. And even after adding a subwoofer, uh, you still may not be satisfied um, as as if you were getting a you know full floor stander at this price point. Now the benefit of the speaker is this mid range, and some people are just going to like it and uh, get it right away, and some people just are not going to get it. It was the exact same thing with the LS35A. Some people exactly knew what that speaker was about and loved it, adored it, um, raved about it, while some people just didn't get it. They were like, what is this small bookshelf speaker going to ever produce that I can't get uh, from you know a floor sender in this, comp uh, in this competition? So um, I perfectly get this speaker and many others will, but for some people, they just won't get it. So that is basically the caveat with the speaker in terms of its sound characteristics. It's going to be enough for everyone, especially for those that are looking for a floor standard performance. Now wrapping things up with my final thoughts, I really think that mid-range is one of the best in its price range. At $2,600 USD, it's really hard pressed for me to find a better mid-range. In fact, with a lot of the bookshelf speakers I reviewed um, on this channel, and in fact, you know, even compared to the very fam famous LS3 5A, I find the mid-range to be very, very, uh, good and even very close to saying that I actually prefer the mid-range of this speaker versus the LS35A itself. So that's goes to say a lot. So there you have it. Um, I mean, it's a fantastic speaker, especially at this price point. I think the mid-range and the high frequency is just on point. And if you really want that extra bass, then you can add a subwoofer and you'll, have, you'll be a happy camper. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.